Welcome in, welcome all to another edition of TGPW, the grill position wrestling, the most unprofessional professional wrestling, and fire pro wrestling. I, of course, am your host, the Swink Nick Swinky, and this is part three of four of TGPW and SPF Infinity presents Mass Hysteria. And we are kicking things off with an eight man tag team contest. Making their way to the ring first, it is the Super Machines. Sweet Machine, Handsome Machine, Martez Machine, and War Horse. War Horse and the Super Machines. And their opponents being led to the ring by Mike Stover of the Stover Load Podcast. It is Stover Skyscrapers. Mike Stover, Sid Vicious, Dan Spivey, and Mean Mark Callis. So the way this match came about, in case you're wondering, Stover challenged the Super Machines to a three-on-three -three match against his new team of the Skyscrapers. He told the Super Machines that they're the worst team in every promotion, and they'll make the Skyscrapers look really good in their debut. Warhorse was walking backstage, and the challenge caught his attention. He walked over to the two groups and told Stover that this four-on-four -four rules ass. Stover told Warhorse, it's not a four-on-four, -four, it's a three-on-three. -three. Warhorse replied, it's a four on four. Stover replied, three on three. Warhorse said, four on four. Stover said, three on three. They went back and forth for a little while until Warhorse bugs bunny Stover. Warhorse yelled, three on three. And Stover yelled, four on four. Warhorse yelled, three on. And Stover screamed, it's a four on four match and that's final. Warhorse and the super machines looked at each other, then replied in unison, okay, and walked away. Stover was very proud of himself until moments later when he realized what had happened. And so that's where we're at when it comes to this eight-man tag team match, in case you're wondering how we got here. This is the first appearance of the Skyscrapers in TGPW, in case you were wondering. This is also the first appearance of the third member of the Super Machine, Super Handsome Machine, who's in there right now. In his uh, beautiful tracksuit there. And his blue mask. Going at it with Dan Spivey of the Skyscrapers. And a tag is made to Super Martez Machine now. Irish whip reversal by Spivey. Runs right into the big boot. Does Martez Machine. It's been a while since we've seen the Super Machines. And it's been a while since we've seen Warhorse in TGPW. Last time we saw the Super Machines, they lost to the Gorillas of Destiny. Warhorse competed in the TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament, where he teamed with Danhausen as Warhausen. They lost in the first round to the Hardy Boys, which was a classic TGPW match, if you haven't seen that yet. Go to the TGPW archives. There is a playlist containing all the TGPW matches. I'll, I'll uh, put an iCard in the video where you can go to the playlist and watch any of the previous TGPW shows you haven't yet. And uh, if you have not yet, now's a good time to hit the like button, uh, leave a comment on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're not 
If your notifications are not set up, make sure you hit the bell icon to be notified when the next episode of TGPW goes up. As I said, this is part three of four of Mass Hysteria. So make sure you get your notifications when the next episode of TGPW goes up. Right now we've got Super Swink Machine in there with Sid Vicious. As soon as I say that, Sid tags out to Stover. Mike Stover, we will ask him in the tournament to crowd the open talk through and through the Flash champion. That was back at uh, Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular. He would defeat Coco T. Ware in the first in the first round of the tournament, but then would be eliminated in the finals by the eventual winner of the tournament and the championship, Kayvon Journey. Also in that final, Mike Breton and Jason Powell. Warhorse, a longtime member of the TGPW roster, made his debut on our inaugural show, Guerrilla Warfare, where he beat Danzig in a singles match. He would then team with the artist formerly known as Battle Pony, now known as Thunder Horse, where they would defeat the team of Danzig and Zandig. He would next appear in the TGPW title tournament in April, where he'd lose in the first round to John Moxley. And then, like I said, in July, he and Danhausen would lose. In the first round of the TGW title tournament back at Blood Red and White and Blue to the Hardy Boys. Super Machines were on the first show. They lost to the Grills the Destiny via Countout. They would then face them. In a rematch on the next show, Tag Team Madness. Back in March. In which the Grill Dis Destiny would be victorious again. This time in a no DQ, no count out tornado tag match. And that was the last time we saw the Super Machines and TGPW. Triple team beat down by the skyscrapers on Warhorse. Of course, Mike Stover, as I mentioned before, the ho host of the Stoverload podcast. There's a cutter by Handsome Machine. Hip toss by Martez. Stop off the top. Stoverload is in a lot of trouble right now, folks. But Stover makes a tag to Mean Mark. The half hatch suplex by Martez. There's a Boston Crab applied by Mean Mark. Warhorse there to break it up. But since the last time we saw the machines in TGPW, they added Handsome Machine to the group. There's a Superman punch swinging neckbreaker by Mean Mark. He goes for a cover, hooks a leg, two, no, just a one count, says referee Bill Alfonso. It's breaking down here. What a kick combination right there by Martez as Handsome Machines tagged in. Double suplex by the skyscrapers, Sid and Callus right there. Sid taking it to Handsome Machine, boot to the face. You can win by pinfall, submission, knockout, countout, or disqualification in TGPW. 
There's a 20 count on the floor. If you did not know the rules in TGPW, there's another cutter there by Handsome Machine. But Sid quickly back to his feet now. Set off the ropes with an Irish whip. Power slam with a cover and a two count. Or it's broken up by the skyscrapers. Hanging vertical by Mean Mark. Body slam on Sid and a tag is made to Swink Machine. Double team no. Sid fights him off. The self-proclaimed master and ruler of the world. Off the ropes. Larry, it takes him down. Drop down. Back, body drop. And a cover, center of the ring. Two and no. It's quickly broken up as everybody's in there now. There's a gorilla press slam by Sid. And a tag is made to Dangerous Dance by V. Sid sends him right into Spivey, but an overhead belly-to-belly -belly throw by Swink Machine. Spivey with a brain buster. Swink makes a tag out to the Warhorse. Hangman's Neckbreaker by Spivey. Uh-oh, Warhorse is caught by Callus. What is Spivey doing here? But no, Warhorse fights him off. Tree of Woe. Warhorse stuck in the Tree of Woe. Now Warhorse in that skyscraper corner fights his way out, though. Loading up for that Lariat. No, Rising Lariat misses. No, Reversal. By Warhorse. I think he's loading up for that Lariat again. Can he get it? He does. Connects with that Lariat. To Sid. And makes a tag. Sid blocks it. Short arm Lariat right there from Sid. Sid from behind, standing switch reversal, but a back elbow and a boot. Catches Swink Machine. Sid with a clubbing blow to the back. And now looking around the arena. And another clubbing lariat to the back of the neck. As Mean Mark is in there. The skyscraper is in control here. Sweet machine in a bad, bad way right now. Oh no, referee Bill Alfonso got knocked down. There's a power bomb by Mean Mark. He's got the claw hold applied, but there's no ref. There's a stutter by Swink Machine and a little miscommunication there. I think Mar uh, Warhorse was trying to do the death by double stomp. It gets caught with that power bomb from Mark. Callus off the ropes. And he collides with Warhorse. They both go down. Both men back to their feet. Sit out, power bomb by Warhorse, said, oh, I thought he got him, but a 2.9 says referee Bill Alfonso, a bloodied Bill Alfonso. Spivey sets him up, tombstone, pile driver. Handsome Machine comes back with a Russian leg sweep. Standing senton. And now a series of headbutts. And another senton. Handsome Machine with a flurry of offense and an insiguri. Spivey doesn't know where he is. And he got leveled with that lariat. Is that it? No. Broke it up.
Tombstone by Spivey on Handsome Machine. Russian Leg Sweep by Handsome Machine. Martez in there now. And here comes Mean Mark Callis again, who bowls him over with a shoulder tackle. Mean Mark with that leaping lariat. And then a swinging neck breaker. That could be it. Two and three. He got him. Stover skyscrapers get the win here in this eight-man tag team contest to open the show. All right, we are ready for six-man tag team action, trios action, if you will, with our second contest. Introducing first, it is the team of Laredo Kid, Pagano and Michael Brennan, a.k.a. Crooked Tortuga. Together they are the Circus of Slime. And their opponents. Representing the AAA promotion in Mexico. Monster Clown, Murder Clown, and Psycho Clown. Los Psycho Circus. And here we go. If you remember back at the That Trios Tournament T3 2021, back in September, Laredo Kid helped the Circus of Slime during the Trios Tournament because he owed Pagano a favor. Not that long ago, Pagano helped Laredo Kid against Los Psycho Circus. So, Los Psycho Circus is here to get revenge on Laredo in Pagano. Of course, last month we saw Laredo Kid and Shaggy Tudope in the corner of the Circus of Slime, Grant Blanco and Michael Brennan, in which they defeated the team of Aphrodite, Utami Hayashista and Seiya Kamitani with Azume and Momo Watanabe in their corner. But this is Laredo Kid's first match as a member of the Circus of Slime. Wait a minute, Psycho Clown's got a light tube. What the hell? But now we got Pagato and Psycho Clown going at it here. Psycho Clown, one of the top stars in AAA Lucha Libre.
a lot of history between the Psycho Circus and Laredo Kid going all the way back to 2008. Murder Clown in there now with Brennan, and there's a cover, gets two. Here's a double team by Pagato and Brennan. And there's a tag made to Monster Clown. This team of Monster Clown and Murder Clown. They last wrestled Laredo Kid, who was teaming with Superfly. In a four-way ladder match that also included the team of Damien Seisseis and Nicho El Millenario and Aerostar and Drago. That was back in 2016. There's a cover and a two count by Psycho Clown. And now an air raid crash by Psycho Clown. He goes for another cover. Did he get him? No. Two count only, says two count Lutefano. Agano made a tag there to Crooked Tortuga. Tortuga. Telling Psycho Clown to kiss his shell. What a destroyer by Psycho Clown. As he makes a tag to Monster Clown. That light tube still in the ring. Psycho Clown brought that in earlier. It looks like Brennan biting the forehead of Monster Clown. And again, he's biting him. And I believe, yes, it looks like Monster Clown has been busted open. Looks like Pagano and Murder Clown are the legal participants here. Murder Clown to the top, hits the senton off the top, does Murder Clown. Flying head scissors right there from Pagano. Pagano fights his way out of the corner. Thought maybe he was going for a tag there. No, instead, series of chops ending with a spinning back chop. Springboard flying cross body by Pagano. Here's a double team by the Clowns, Psycho Clown and Murder Clown with a double power bomb. The Rado Kid in there now. The Rado Kid setting him up on the top turnbuckle. Superplex, no. Counter Destroyer off the ropes by Psycho Clown. That could be it. Two and no. 
broken up to the last second. There's a roll up by Laredo Kid. And no, only a two count. The other members of Circus of Slime were distracted. Air raid crash by Psycho Clown. Goes for another cover and again broken up. Spike power bomb by Monster and Murder Clown spinning. Brainbuster on Pagano. Psycho Clown sent into Brennan. Gets caught with an insecurity from Laredo Kid, but gets the tag to Monster Clown. Sunset flip, code red, whatever you want to call it. Monster Cloud sends Brennan head first into the buckle. Ties him up now in the tree of woe. Shots to the midsection. And now Brennan just choking him. He's got till five. Risking disqualification is Brennan. Series of shots from Brennan. To the bloody monster clown. And now mocking the fans with that. Yes chant. Flying head scissor take down and a one count only for Pagano is there. Laredo kid with a 630 off the top. That could be it. Two and three. No. Psycho clown got out of two. I thought that was it right there. Gory bomb by Psycho clown. He heads out to the apron, springboard, Hurricane Rana, shoulders down. But Circus of Slime right there. Back and forth, high-flying Lucha Libre action here between these trios. It looks like Laredo Kid is busted open. As he makes a tag to Pagano. Power bomb. And it looks like another power bomb. Monster Cloud dominating here. Did he get it? No. Laredo there. Destroyer on Murder Clown. Dominator. Destroyer by Pagano on Murder Clown. Or Monster Cloud, rather. Monster Cloud with another power bomb. Is that it? No. Bread in there to break it up. Spike power bomb on Psycho Cloud. Double suplex on the Murder Cloud. Pagano was dazed there for a moment. Destroyer by Psycho Cloud. But he picks him up. Break to the eyes. There's a code breaker. Both men spent here. There's a flying splash off the ropes. And another destroyer by the Psycho Clown. Brennan doesn't know where he is right now. Gory bomb, but Brennan comes back with a knife edge chop that drops him like a sack of hot rocks. Brennan ties Psycho Clown to the tree of woe, stomps away at the midsection. And now biting Psycho Clown through that mask. And I believe Psycho Clown has been opened up. It's indeed the blood of Psycho Cloud on the mat. Sidewalk slam. Can he make a tag? He does. Murder Cloud and Pagano now, the legal men. In case you're keeping score here. And now just a blatant choke by Brennan. 
who's not the legal man, so the referee can do nothing about it. Power bomb by Murder Clown. Is that it? No. Double backdrop suplex there by Laredo and Tortuga. There's a low blow by Pagano. But a gut wrench suplex by the Murder Clown as Murder Clown heads to the top. Double axe handle off the top. Follows it up with a lariat and another one. Avoids the chop, does Pagano in Laredo. Makes a tag, I believe. Monster Clown. Oh, takes a 630. He's the legal man. A 6.30 to the back. And another 6.30 this time. He got him in the chest. But again, far too close to the Psycho Circus corner. When Laredo went for that pin. There's a low blow. We got tags on both sides of the ring. Murder Clown just collides with Laredo and everybody's down. Spinning Brain Buster by the Murder Clown. Pagato is in a daze and he gets caught with a lariat. And he may be hurt right now. Axe Handle Sledge to the back of the neck. Pagano gets power bombed. But comes back with a rake to the eyes. But Murder Clown again with a power bomb and gets a one before Laredo Kid is there to break it up. Brennan with a splash off the ropes. Did he get him? No. Again broke it up. This has been a marathon of a match here. Between these trios. An absolute war of attrition. Who's going to survive this match? Is that it? Two and... No, I thought that was it right there. Oh, no. Looks like two count Lou Tafano collided with Monster Clown. As Monster Clown's got that rat Canadian backbreaker rack on. But two count Lou... Finally back to his feet. Starts counting out Brennan. Again risking disqualification before that choke is broken up. Tags out to the Laredo Kid. Laredo Kid. Spike power bomb with Tortuga. Monster Clown makes a tag to Psycho Clown. Oh, Psycho Clown and Laredo Kid clonk heads, center of the ring. Both men a bloody mess here. There's a destroyer again from Psycho Clown, but he picks him up. Backdrop, suplex. And now they're trading shots, both men, as I said. A bloody mess. Super kick from Laredo. Discus Lariat from Psycho Clown, and he goes down. And now he's got a submission, and that's it. Laredo Kid taps out <clears throat> as the Psycho Circus get the win. All right. Well, something a bit different here for match number three in part three of TGPW Mass Hysteria. This is a match 
featuring the TWS Shoot Fight Hardcore Invitational Tournament winner, Glacier, taking on Mass Warner. And of course, the Shoot Fight Hardcore Invitational Tournament, the SHIT, was competed inside the eight sides of this octagon, the dragon cage, if you will, as it's called. And this is fought under a unique set of rules. There are no pinfalls. You can only win by submission or knockout. And it will consist <clears throat> of five rounds of three minutes each. Of course, Glacier won the TWS SHIT tournament. And if you're wondering how this match came about, Glacier asked for this match because he felt disrespected after Matt stored multiple cases of light beer in Glacier's dressing room. Old Mancer figured since Glacier's gimmick is being cold, then the temperature in his dressing room must be cold too. Mance also figured that a cold dressing room would be a good place to store his light beer. Although the dressing room was actually room temperature, old Mancer didn't mind because he likes room temperature light beer too. Glacier entered his dressing room to find Mance sitting in it drinking light beer. So that's how this match came about here between old Mancer and Glacier. There's that kick by Glacier. Of Mancer fighting back. And now both men trading shots here. As we're coming up towards the end of round number two here. And there's a low blow. And that's the end of round two. <clears throat> here we go with round three of five. Again, five rounds, three minutes each. Sure, with that drop kick to the knee of Mance. Again, with that standing side kick, and Glacier hits the pose. Mance comes with that with a body slam and then a headbutt. There's a DDT. And now a backbreaker. Crowd doesn't like Mancer. Crowd booing Mance Warner here. There's a DDT from Glacier. And now a dragon screw to the knee. And a kick to the back. Mance comes back with a pendulum backbreaker. German suplex release and that could be it. And I think it is. Yes, Mance Warner knocks out Glacier on round number three in two minutes and nine seconds. Mance Warner is your winner. Match number four is an Atomico's match. And it is introducing first the team of the black man, Coco t -Wear, Mortis, Suicide, and Danhausen. Together they are very evil. Very nice, very evil, very kayfabe, the people's band, rather. And their opponents led to the ring by Ultramantis Black. It's Ultramantis Black, Hollow Wicked, Frightmare, and Delirious. They are the order of the Neo Solar Spectral Envoy. So, how this match came about is Danhausen gets a one count there on Delirious. Ultramantis Black discovers that the teeth of a powerful agent sorcerer 
are mixed in with the other teeth in Danhausen's jar of teeth. Ultramantis needs the sorcery teeth because they are part of one of the mystic rituals to turn the happiness and goodness of the holiday season into sadness and evilness. He asks Danhausen for the teeth, but Danhausen refuses because he doesn't trust Ultramantis. Danhausen does his own research into the mystic ritual and realizes that he and his trio's partners, Mortis and Suicide, must prevent the order of the Neo Solar Spectral Envoy from gaining control of the sorcery teeth at all costs. Also, while doing his research, Danhausen misinterprets a prophecy about a charismatic man in black shall channel the vibration of the universe to uncorrupt the sorcery teeth. When Danhausen feels a vibration and sees Coco playing his bass guitar backstage during SPF Infinity's weekly TV show, he approaches him and Coco introduces himself as the black man. Danhausen then convinces a confused but curious and always congenial Coco that he's the charismatic one in the prophecy and they must band together to stop the order of the Neo Solar Spectral Envoy and uncorrupt the sorcery teeth. Frightmare and Hollow Wicked, a tag team. The former uh, Chikara Campeones de Parejas are Hollow Wicked and Frightmare. Let me correct. Let me make a correction there. It was Delirious and Hollow Wicked that were the Campionadas de Parejas and Chikara. My bad. Hollow Wicked and Frightmare never won the tag team titles in Chikara. But Delirious and Hollow Wicked, as the team of Incoherence, won the tag team titles. Hollow Wicked, also a two-time Chikara Grand Champion. Give up. 
Ultra Manus Black is the leader of the Order of the Neo Solar Temple. The Order of the Neo Solar Spectral Envoy. My bad. Mortis with a face buster. We last saw Mortis in TGPW. Way back at Holy Diver in the month of May where he lost a match to Glacier. There's the Black Man Coco T in there with Frightmare. Coco T, a member of the Detroit Wrestling Connection. Nice drop kick by Coco and goes for a cover. Gets two. His Frightmare kicks out. Suicide in there now. Kamikaze by suicide right there. And a tag is made to Hollow Wicked. Fans blueing Frightmare and Hollow Wicked here. Coco T made his first appearance back in April where he lost in the first round of the title tournament to Mike Stover. Actually, no, he beat Mike Stover. My bad in the first round, then would lose in the second round of the Ghost of the Macho Man, Randy Savage. And at Elite Eight, he would team with Kayvon, Jason Powell, and Mike Stover. They would lose in an eight-man tag to the Hurt Business. His next appearance would be at Holy Diver, where the Detroit Wrestling Connection, Coco, Kayvon, and Jason would defeat Tommy Dreamer, Eddie Edwards, and Neil Carroll's in a six-man. Then at Do You Like Fish Sticks, Detroit Wrestling Connection in an eight-man tag, an Atomico's, if you will. Coco, Kayvon, Jason, and Marty would defeat the Circus of Slime, El Gran Blanco, Crooked Tortuga, and the ICP. Then at Blood Red, White, and Blue, he would enter the tag title tournament where they, he and Marty Drip Trip, known as Coco Drip, would lose in the first round to Fish Mox, Steve Aaron, and John Moxley. In episode 666, he would team with Dusty Rhodes and they defeat Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard. At Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular, he lost in the opening round of the Open Talk 3 with 3 the Flash Championship tournament to Mike Stover. Then in the Trios tournament, he alongside Kayvon and Jason would defeat Hit Row in the first round before losing in the quarterfinals. To Bullet Club, Tomatonga, Tangaloa, and Hikaleo. And that has been the history of Coco T here in TGPW. Danhausen, I mentioned earlier when we talked about Warhorse, he made his first appearance teaming with Warhorse as Warhausen in a losing effort to the Hardy Boys in the tag title tournament. And again, this is Mortis' second appearance. This is Suicide's first appearance in TGPW. Along with the first appearance of all the members of the Order of the Neo Spectral Envoy. Neo Solar Spectral Envoy. I'll get it right one of these days. As this match showcases members of the SPF Affinity roster. And look at that standing C4 by Suicide. As this is a joint show between TGPW and SPF Infinity. Nice move and a two count. As things are breaking down as everybody's in the ring now. Triple team beat down. By the order. Sunset bomb and a three count. Suicide gets the pin and the win. Are very nice, very evil. Very kayfabe, the people's band. Fight. 
This is match number five here in part three of TGPW Mass Hysteria. This is an eight woman unliving nightmare elimination match. The winner will receive a TGPW championship match of their choice. It's Alexa Bliss, Ariel, Ember Moon, Holodead, Ludark Shaitan, Luna Vashan, Shotzi Blackheart, and Thunder Rosa. All of them going at here, vying for a championship opportunity here in this eight-woman elimination match. And the action is fast. It is furious. And referee Bill Alfonso is going to have to try to keep track of it all. Track of it all. I'm going to have to try to keep track of it all as well. Pinfall, submission, knockout, count out, disqualification. Those are all the ways you can be eliminated in this match. As again, elimination rules. The match continues. Until there is only one left. I will try to keep track of the action as best I can. Well, Ludark Shaitan, we see over there in the corner with a fork, digging it into the forehead of Ember Moon, busting her open. Several of these women making their TG TGPW debuts. Flying crossbody off the top by Ariel on Luna Vashan. There's a golden trigger by Ember Moon and Ludark on Alexa Bliss. Ariel with a cover on Shotzi gets a one count. In fact, I believe the only woman who's appeared in TGPW before in this match is indeed Thunder Rosa as she is a member of the trio known as the Thunder Buddies. Jushin Thunder Liger, Thunder Horse, and Thunder Rosa making up that trio. Ludark Shaitan masked deathmatch wrestler from Mexico. Hella Dead and Thunder Rosa, a tag team at one point known as the Twisted Sisters. Hella Dead, of course, now competes in MLW. But she is a part of that women's division in MLW. Ember Moon with a cover on Alexa Bliss just gets a two count. And a 2.9 on Luna Vashan. Ariel, a member of the Bloodthirsty Brood, alongside Gangrel, Kevin Thorne, and Vampiro. And look at this, a hockey fight between Holiday and Ludark Chartan. Ludark gets the better of that exchange. Double knees off the top by Ariel on Luna Vashan. There's the fire thunder driver by Thunder Rosa. Goes for a cover, gets a one count. Luna knocked out of the ring, gets back in at a count of three. Again, 20 count on the floor as Luna... Jams her shoulder to the midsection of Ariel in the corner over there. Sit out power bomb on Ariel, gets a two count. Does Luna as Thunder gets a one count. Thunder Rosa, that is, gets a one count on Ludark. Ludark thrown to the outside by Thunder Rosa who follows her out. 
And now these two are fighting on the outside. Both women back in the ring. Holodead with a cover on Ariel gets a 2.9. A flying headbutt off the top misses. And Shotzi Blackheart is the first one eliminated by Thunder Rosa. Didn't see that one coming, but Shotzi Blackheart eliminated from this match. We are down to seven. Well, if you had Shotzi Blackheart in your betting pool, well, you just lost some money there, folks, because she was the first one eliminated. The sliding D by Ember Moon as she plants Ludark with that flatliner and another sliding D. Ember Moon running wild here. But Ludark comes back with a DDT. Meanwhile, Holodead with an implant DDT on Luna Vachon. It's a springboard chop off the ropes. Sister Abigail by Alexa Bliss on Ariel, but she goes for a cover on Luna and gets the three count. Alexa Bliss with the presence of mind to cover Luna Vachon, who is down on the canvas. And Luna Vachon is out of here. The implant buster by Holodad. Seatbelt pin, and she got her. Ariel has been eliminated. Inside cradle by Thunder Rosa on Ember Moon, and she got her. Ember Moon's eliminated, but she's taking it out <coughs> on Holodad before she leaves the ring for some reason. Holodad wasn't even the one that eliminated her. It was Thunder Rosa. And now a hockey fight between Alexa and Ludark before a DDT, sorry, a drop kick by Thunder Rosa to the back of the head of Ludark. We are quickly down to four. Thunder Rosa planted, and Thunder Rosa has been eliminated by her former partner, Holodead. But Thunder Rosa's not done. Fire Thunder Driver on Holodead for good measure before she leaves the ring. Thunder Rosa was not happy about being eliminated by her tag team partner, or former tag team partner, I guess, at this point. Insult to injury by Alexa Bliss. Implant Buster again from Holodead on Ludark Shaitan. And another one from Holodead. Alexa Bliss takes her down. Ludark with a power bomb. And just a straight right hand from Alexa Bliss. Ludark with a fork again to the forehead. Risking disqualification is Ludark, but she doesn't care. Holodead is a woman possessed here. Again with that right hand, Alexa Bliss may have knocked her out, but Ludark, for some reason, with a back kick. Spinning back kick saves, uh, saves Alexa, uh, sorry, saves uh, Holodead, rather. Holodead plants Ludark, but Alexa Bliss breaks it up for some reason. Inverted DDT. Again, this is elimination. I don't know why they're breaking up pinfalls here. You would think they would want the other person to eliminate the other one, but what do I know? There's the chop from Ludark, and again with the fork, burying it into the head of Holodead, who's now bleeding. She clonks heads with Alexa Bliss. That could be the opening Ludark needs here. And just, she's got a sickle. A sickle of the forehead of Alexa Bliss. Where does she keep getting these weapons? I don't know. But as I mentioned, Ludark Shaitan, deathmatch wrestler. 
Cradle DDT on Holodead. Alexa Bliss misses the Twisted Bliss. Pump handle slam by Holodead and a pump handle slam. No reversal. Slips out the back door to Alexa Bliss but gets caught with a snapmare. Cradle DDT again by Shaitan. Shaitan goes up. But gets caught with a sister Abigail. And again, the double knees from Alexa Bliss. Then a straight right hand and a shot for Holiday as well. Alexa Bliss dominating here. Titan and Holiday. Holiday with the implant DDT on Ludark. And now Alexa and Holiday trading shots. Big boot from Holiday, but a lariat from Alexa takes down Holiday. Sliding drop kick by Ludark. Power bomb by Holiday. Hooks the leg. Did she get her? Two and three. Ludark Shaitan has been eliminated. We are down to two. It is Holiday. It is Alexa Bliss. Who's going to win this match? Insult to injury by Alexa. Twisted bliss, but nobody home. Holiday with the splash off the ropes. A slap to the face. Twisted bliss again misses. She going for it a third time? No. Again, nobody there. But caught her with the sister Abigail, center of the ring, and I think that's it. And it is. Alexa Bliss is your winner in this Unliving Nightmare elimination matchup. Match six is a special singles matchup. Introducing first, representing Decay, it is the Demon Assassin, Rosemary. And her opponent. It is Sexy Star. As you can see, we have a special guest referee for this match. It is Joseph Park Esquire. And if you're wondering how this match came about. Rosemary and Sexy Star have a troubled past. Do you remember back in Mexico, AAA, Sexy Star allegedly... Uh, shot on Rosemary, if you will, legitimately injuring her in a match in Mexico. And Abyss tried to reconcile the two after all these years to ease part of Rosemary's troubled soul. He even tagged with Sexy Star in the SPF Affinity off-brand two-person tag team tournament of freshness to prove that she's a truly good person. Rosemary was enraged with Abyss for digging all of this up again. So for this match, she deemed, demanded for Abyss, Alley, and every member of Decay to be banned from ringside. Well, Joseph Park has volunteered to be the referee so he can attempt to keep these two bitter enemies from killing each other. So again, the story goes back in AAA, Mexico, there was a match with Rosemary and Sexy Star. Or Sexy Star went off script, as they say. Legitimately injuring and assaulting Rosemary 
for seemingly no reason. Since then, we haven't seen Sexy Star in Mexico or really anywhere else in professional wrestling except for SPF Infinity. Since that incident, there's been another Sexy Star that appeared in AAA Mexico, but it's not the same Sexy Star that most people know from her time in Lucha Underground, where she was the champion in Lucha Underground. Of course, she also tried her hand at mixed martial arts as well. Rosemary the Demon Assassin, member of Decay in Impact Wrestling. There's a power bomb out of an attempted Rada gets a two count. Does Rosemary? Drilling soul butt into the cross arm breaker from Rosemary. Sorry, from Sexy Star to Rosemary. Rosemary with the Boston Crab. Grinding on that side headlock is Sexy Star here. Vertical suplex from Rosemary and now raining down shots. Those forearms to the head of Sexy Star. There's a submission applied. Variation of an STF. And now the three amigos from Sexy Star... In a daze as Rosemary gets caught in that cross arm breaker, but Rosemary in the ropes, says Joseph Park. That last of the three amigos sending her to the outside. Acai moonsault from Sexy Star as she grabs a chair. This was a clean wrestling match, but then Sexy Star grabbed a chair, but... Decided not to use it. Break to the eyes from Rosemary. There's that Golden Gate swing and a cover. And a 2.9 as Rosemary just out at the last second. Golden Gate swing, nightly spiral, whatever you want to call it. There's a sharpshooter, Scorpion Deathlock again. Been called a few different names. Another lightning spiral and another cover from Sexy Star. Did she get her? And she did. Sexy Star with the three count picks up the win over Rosemary. And this is our semi main event of the evening, folks. And it is for the TGPW Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers. It's Doom 1. Doom 2. They are the tag team known as Doom. And their opponents. The champions. They are the TGPW tag team champions. Road Warrior Hawk. Road Warrior Animal. The Road Warriors. Also known as the Legion of Doom. And again, this match for the TGPW Tag Team Championship. The Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, Road Warrior Hawk, Road Warrior Animal, winning the TGPW Tag Team Title Tournament. 
they decided to issue an open challenge to any tag team in professional wrestling for these titles. They didn't care who it is. And so the challenge was answered by the tag team of Doom. And as you can see in the corner of Doom is Woman. As I mentioned before, the Road Warriors won the TGW Tag Team Title Tournament. Winning the finals of that tournament at Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular. En route to winning the titles, they defeated the Faces of Fear. Being the Barbarian. The Circus of Slime team of Gran Blanco and Crooked Tortuga. The Hardy Boys. And then in the finals, defeating the team of Fish Mox, Fish Stick, Steve Aaron, and John Moxley to win the inaugural titles. To become the inaugural TGW Tag Team Champions, rather. Again, that was back at Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular in the month of August. Their last appearance being back in September at T3, that trios tournament 2021, the TGPW Trios Championship Tournament Part 2 in a non-title match. They defeated the team of Wealth and Influence, Ted DiBiase and Sasha Banks. In that match, Alfonso was the referee. Here we see he is the referee again for this one. After winning that non-title match, they decided they wanted to be fighting champions. They didn't care who they faced. So they issued an open challenge. An open contract, if you will, to any tag team. Throughout all of time and space, I guess you would say, and the multiverse. As Doom has come over here via SPF Infinity to challenge... The Road Warriors for the titles here. Again, the normal rules apply in this title matchup. As all four members of the team going at it on the outside. Looks like Doom 1 and Hawk in there. Doom 1 tags out to Doom 2. As Animal is in there now. Spike Powerbomb on Doom 1. But Doom 2. With an Irish Whip. But Animal puts on the brakes. They got a strike exchange here. Down goes Doom 2. Animal with a cover on Doom 2. Gets a 2 count before Doom 1 is there to break it up. Doom 2 with a lariat turning Animal inside out with that one. And a tag is made to Doom 1. Elbow drop off the top by Animal. And any of the midsection. You just saw a woman slide the kendo stick in there to Doom 1. But Doom 1, instead of going after the kendo stick, goes after both members of the Road Warriors. There's a high angle Boston Crab by Ant Hawk as Doom 2 is there to break it up. Backbreaker and a body slam on Doom 1. Doom 1 with a clubbing blow to the back. Again, that kendo stick in the ring. This woman slid it into the ring. You have to keep your eyes on a woman at all times. There's a chair on the outside of the ring as well as one of the members of the team brought a chair out. Double team neck breaker and a fist drop by Doom 2 and gets a two count. Body slam sends Hawk out of the ring. Alabama slam by Animal. Did he get the uh, three? No. Gets a two for a low blow. 
as both members of Doom go to work on Animal. Air raid crash on Animal. Animal with a shot to the breadbasket as he makes a tag to Hawk. Animal and Hawk with a, one of the most decorated tag teams in all professional wrestling history. Also one of the most popular tag teams of all time. Some consider them the greatest tag team. What a lariat, and that could be it. Two and three. No! Oh. Hawk kicks out at 2.9. His animal was a bit late to get in there. Hooking lariat and a running fist drop from Hawk. Tags made on both sides of the ring here. Dude with a power bomb neck breaker combination on Hawk as Hawk fights his way out. Animal with a headbutt. And then just a straight elbow to the head. Two and no. There's a cover and a 2.9. Doom 1 nearly had Animal there. Running power slam by Doom 1. What a rope break is there to save him. Back body drop by Doom 1. Spine Buster. Slam there. And another one. Doom 1 tags out to Doom 2. As in comes Hawk. That power bomb neckbreaker combo followed up by the fist drop. And a running shoulder tackle. Is that it? Two and three. No. Hawk again at a, a 2.9. His animal was cut off from saving the matchup for his team. Hawk showing off his resiliency. And again, this match is for the TGPW Tag Team Titles. Running shoulder tackle, but a lariat from Animal. These two teams have gone at it back and forth. Several near falls in this match. For the challengers on the champions. As they've taken the fight to them. All throughout this one. Well, the Road Warriors wanted a challenge, and they got one. What a gorilla press slam by Hawk as it sends him all the way out of the ring. Doom 1 makes... Sorry, Doom 2 makes a tag to Doom 1. Doom 1 just goes low. Nothing fancy about that one. And he just tosses him across the ring, does Animal. Wait a minute. What the hell was that? I think that was Brass Knuckles. He knocked him out with Brass Knuckles, but Hawk was there to save Animal. That could have been the end of the title reign already for the Road Warriors. And now Doom 1 choking Animal in the corner with his boot right across the throat. And everybody goes down. Press slam into the cover. Two and three. He got him. Animal gets the pin as Doom 2 is, or sorry, Doom 1 is there too late as the Road Warriors retain the TGPW Tag Team Championship.
It is now time for our main event of the evening. It is this singles matchup, a grudge matchup scheduled for one fall. Introducing first the one, the only fish sticks, Steve Aaron. And his opponent representing the Alliance to end Steve. One half of CNC Destruction. And it is the career killer, Chris Miller. So earlier in the show, Sky Blue, Axel Rico, and Mateo Valentine were attacked backstage and mercilessly beaten down by TATES, the Alliance to End Steve, leaving them unable to accompany Steve to the ring. C-Red found Steve backstage and told him that he'd be at ringside with him as his power hour partner, but TGPW management decided to ban everyone from ringside in an attempt to prevent this volatile situation from getting even worse. <clears throat> of course, as I mentioned, Chris Miller, a member of the Alliance to End Steve, alongside his tag team partner and seeing the destruction, Cody James, the mysterious masked man metalhead, the evil genius Aaron Xavier, and the mastermind behind TATES, the leader, if you will, Windy City AC, Antoine Clemens. We saw that Antoine was revealed as the mastermind behind the group, alongside the three newest members. CNC Destruction, Cody James, Chris Miller, and Metalhead. We saw that back in July. <clears throat> Actually, that was back in June, my bad, at my own summer after Aaron lost a steel cage match. <clears throat> Controversial circumstances there. They lost the steel cage match. Afterwards, Xavier introduced the newest members of the Alliance to End Steve, who then proceeded to beat him down. They would then attack him again the next month alongside his tag team partner, John Moxley. It was after that beatdown that Aaron received injured ribs. Rim injury or not, Aaron continued to compete. He and Moxley would get all the way to the finals of the tag title tournament before losing to the eventual winners, the Road Warriors, who we just saw. Steve would next compete in the trios tournament where he would team with Sky Blue and Axel Rico in the first round where they would face the alliance to end Steve, the team of Chris Miller, Cody James, and Metalhead. The alliance to end Steve were successful in their goal of eliminating Steve and friends from the tournament as Cody James pinned Steve after a discus lariat. The two would then meet in a singles matchup in October, part of that deathmatch show three in a non-deathmatch singles matchup in which Steve would get a measure of revenge defeating Cody James in that match. Even though Cody James had the other three members of the Alliance to end Steve at ringside, his partner Chris Miller Antoine Clemens, and Aaron Xavier. Despite all that, Steve was able to overcome the odds and defeat Cody James. Here tonight, Chris Miller, out here without the other members of the Alliance to end Steve. But again, as I mentioned earlier, Steve's plan was to have his friends at ringside, but TATES was one step ahead as they took out all three of his friends. C Red volunteered to step in, but by that point, management decided to not even allow anyone at ringside, not even the members of TATES. After the attack that they perpetrated earlier in the show, there's the testicular claw. That could be it. No. 
We've seen Steve win matches with that move before. A series of headbutts by Miller. This is Miller's singles debut here. As I mentioned, TATES eliminating Steve and friends from the first round of the trios tournament. The Alliance and Steve themselves would then be eliminated by the gun club. <clears throat> and there's the sushi roll by Steve Errett. We've seen him win with this move as well. <clears throat> Apologize, folks, as I'm starting to lose my voice here a bit. A little flip-flopping fly. Bionic elbow, daddy. And now a blatant choke by Miller. Yes, till five. Risking disqualification here. As pinfall countout submission, knockout disqualification. Those are all in play here. As there's a low blow by Miller. There's a underhook suplex. Another low blow and a German suplex with a bridge. But Aaron able to grab the rope, force the break. He sends Miller into the buckle. Slams him down and here comes the bonsai drop. That could be it. And a two count only as Miller just gets the shoulder up. Again a German with a bridge. But again, Miller, Aaron too close to the ropes. There's the claw hold again. He's got a hold of Miller's little... Uh, career killers <laughs> oh and he sends him to the outside does Aaron and now getting the crowd into this one as Miller grabs his signature sledgehammer Christine he calls it as he jams the handle into the midsection of Steve Aaron But Aaron coming back now. Maybe going off the ropes. Hits the spear. And that could be it. The signature finishing move of Steve Aaron. But no. Miller out of two. Miller has him up with a military press slam. And down he goes. And now just choking him in the middle of the ring. Nothing but a blatant choke here. But wait a minute. Steve Aaron coming back here. Fish sticks a mania running wild. Setting him up for the, another spear. And that could be it right there. I think Steve Aaron has done it. No. Miller out of two. Miller with a series of headbutts. Goes behind but gets caught with a back elbow. Aaron catches him off the ropes with a spear. And that could be it. Two and no, again Miller out at two. Miller's showing resiliency here. Running face buster by Steve Arendt. Or Bulldog, if you will. Running Bulldog. And a low blow. And now a choke. Again, he has till five. But Aaron not feeling the effects of those shots as he's feeding on the energy of the crowd right now. And a fourth spear. Is that it? Is Miller out? No. Four spears. And Miller still alive in this match. And he hits a pile driver. He says that's it. He goes off the ropes and catches him with a shoulder tackle. And then just kicks him right in the midsection. And now look at this. Mocking Steve Arendt. And tells the fans, up yours. This Chris Miller guy is a jerk. There's a snap suplex. Lariat. But a shoulder tackle from Miller. There's a bicycle kick right there. He got a bicycle. How'd he get a bicycle in this arena? 
Oh, and then both men collide as they clonk heads. And both back to their feet. But a lariat turns him inside out. Miller is staggered. And now Aaron. Seems like he's been re-energized by the fans. But a suplex by Miller. As Steve stunned with a back elbow. Dazes Miller. Irish rip reversal into the buckle he goes. Comes in with that elbow. Falls up with an elbow drop to the back of the head. And a lariat turns him inside out. I don't know what Steve's thinking here, but... Well, he goes going for a fifth spear. And Miller avoids the contact, reverses the headlock into a back suplex. <laughs> There's just a, a punch right to the face. Nothing fancy there. There's another bicycle from Miller. But that kick caught Miller in the top of the head. And a running bulldog. But Miller quickly back up and then quickly throw to the outside. Miller grabs another sledgehammer from under the ring. And just clobbered Aaron over the head with it. And then mocks him some more. You can feel... The animosity, the hatred between these two guys. And there's a low blow. And a low blow in return from Steve Arrett. Again, these two guys hate each other. And a long-standing rivalry between these two. Spanning many promotions. And there's a running bulldog. Both men, though, you can see... Feeling the effects of this matchup. Very physical, very intense, back and forth contest here. And there it is, the testicular claw, and that's enough as Miller gives it up in our main event as Fish Stick Steve Aaron is victorious. And the testicular claw gets the win for Steve Arendt over the career killer Chris Miller in our main event of part three of TGBW Mass Hysteria. So Steve Arendt overcoming another member of the Alliance to end Steve in a singles match to end the show. He has now defeated both members of CNC Destruction, Cody James and Chris Miller. That testicular claw proving to be effective. We've seen him win matches with that move before. He's beat the John Moxley with that move before. And once again, the testicular claw gets a win for Steve Aaron. And that is going to do it for another edition of TGPW, the Gorilla Position Wrestling, the most unprofessional professional wrestling in Fire Pro Wrestling. I, of course, have been your host, The Swink. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, like, comment, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you hit the bell icon to get notifications so you know when part four of four of TGPW Mass Hysteria goes up. Until next time, I am your host, The Swink, signing off.